So my name is Meilis. Um, it's now 20 years uh, I work in, in French publishing. Uh, I've worked for um, British and French publishing house, always in the licensing um, department, uh, both doing international rights and audiovisual audio rights. Um, I've worked for many companies uh, in big group, but also for independent publishing house. And it's now three years I'm working for Stock Publishing House, uh, part of the Hachette Group. Stock is the oldest French publishing house uh, in France. It actually exists since 1708. Um, so I've decided to organize my presentation in three parts. As the first one is, uh, how does it happen? What are the mutual interests of a pure producer and the publishers in adapting a book. Then the second part is what type of books are getting adapted, which content, what genre. Um, and the third part is going to focus on the strategies to place a book uh, with the producer. And I will then focus on two specific examples. And then I open the, the, question, the question and, and uh, answer session. I'm now trying to share my screen. So first, what is a book adaptation? So book adaptation, um, this is a story told in a book that becomes a story told in a film, uh, which can either be a feature film or a series. So books uh, are not the only possible original source for a film. Most of the film are developed from a script, uh, which is an original script. But recently, among the most successful films, more and more are book adaptations. So publishers sell the usually exclusive right to adapt a specific book into a film. Then uh, a contract is made. Um, it's usually it consists in two, into two parts. One regarding the development itself, with an option to develop a script exclusively. Then once the condition are gathered, that means once a cast has been attached, once financial supports from distributors, a platform. Uh, bank loans have been gathered. The film is what is called green lighted. And we enter a contract regarding the film itself and the main revenues of the film. So, what's very important is most of the developments do not end up into a film. Many projects are just given up. So, as um, film rights person, my job is to find the right artistic fit for a specific project. And usually what makes a difference is having the right scriptwriter or the right director uh, attached to the project so that I maximize the changes of the project to happen. So this, um, the uh, question I've been asking myself preparing this presentation is, why is the book adaptation beneficial to both the producer and the publisher? Because I think it helps understanding why a deal actually happens or not. Um, on the side of a publisher, I think, especially today, it's one of the best way to make an author grow on the local and international market. What I mean is, basically expand his reputation and readership. Uh, on the publisher side, uh, there is obviously the um, financial issue because film-wide deals are a complement of revenues to the actual sales of the printed or electronic book. On, on the author side, um, it's also very interesting because a, a, an author, so someone writing, can become a film talent, can be a consultant on a, film, on a book adaptation, can even be the screenwriter, or sometimes, in some cases, a director. 
and they often get more money from this contribution than the book uh, rights deals in itself. So this is very important if you want to you, you know, strengthen a relationship with an author to be a very efficient on the film rights side. On the side of the producer, uh, instead of starting a project from scratch, you have a book, which is a starting point for the, for the script. And uh, I think the second uh, very uh, efficient um, point is that it helps packaging a proposal for finances. Because to finances, a book adaptation is good value. You can build the audience of the film, of the series, on the core of the readership. And you can also approach a prestigious ca cast because actors are really fond of book adaptation. So in any case, book adaptation for producers means prestige. So I, I think you always have to keep this in mind when talking about and pitching a book. So then maybe we can move to the next. Um, yes, thank you. So in real life, how does a publisher sell rights to a producer? So on the one hand, you have the producers looking for IPs. Um, to producers and, and on the other hand, you have publishers looking for producers to adapt their book. So supply and demand must meet, and it takes a lot of time. Uh, there is an image one of my uh, colleagues, much more senior than I have, uh, gave me. Uh, she, she said the job is about the shoe of Cinderella, uh, you know, the, the tail. Uh, so you must try a lot of princesses, a lot of feats before finding the right Cinderella, before finding your producer. So you have, basically, my job is to, to create, to be part of as many events as possible to create opportunities to meet and foster long-term relationship with producers so that they understand that uh, I am easy to access, I have interesting properties. So there are specific events dedicated to book adaptation. Uh, so for instance, on this picture, this is me uh, pitching at the Cannes Festival uh, in France. Uh, on the occasion of an event called Shoot the Book, specifically dedicated to book adaptation. But there are other ones across the world. Um, the one I know and have been part is Berlinale in Germany, but also uh, the Toronto Film Festival as a specific um, event uh, dedicated to book adaptation. Um, so lately, as most of my colleagues have told you, the in-person meetings uh, have been more difficult to organize. But online events have been held with great professionals from all over the world. And it has actually created new opportunities of, of, of business. So there is this paradox that since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, the world is split into pieces, relatives and families have difficulties to see each other. But at the same time, never have professional been uh, so um, easy to access. So in the past year, I've had access to new clients. I've, I've been meeting uh, US um, talent agencies, scouting agencies, which until now I thought were absolutely out of reach. So I think thanks to the video uh, calls, online B2B festivals, uh, this is something which is new. And let's see if these trends will remain, remain after the pandemic. Could, could we move to the next, please? So to understand why a book uh, is adapted into a film, one must come back to a very simple fact. A story is written in a book and it has already seduced a publisher who decided to invest in this story. So for a producer, this very simple fact legitimates the content, especially over an original script he could have received from you know, a random scriptwriter. So next, the next step is, what if this story was validated by readers all over the world 
and sometimes even across several centuries. This is, this is very convincing. So for instance, I, I've put this picture of, of, of the late, latest um, James Austin adaptation, but she is one of the most adapted author. So I've tried to, to think about that, to try and understand why. So our book are absolutely modern classics. Uh, they are telling universal love stories, revisit revisiting the romantic genre. So you have a happy ending, but also uh, it tackles uh, social issues such as the wedding institutions or women's economical dependence. So all those themes are absolutely universal across time and space, I think. So another type of books which are getting adapted more and more are true stories with this famous credit line you might have seen on the American film, especially freely inspired by or based on a true story. So you have many examples of those films, but for instance, teams of rivals about the President Lincoln in the US is based on, on, a, on a huge biography of the President Lincoln. So here the book provides a very raw documentation for the producer that will fit a fiction. So sometimes you have too much materials, too many characters, but you know, it helps rooting uh, the script to write in a, in a very rich material. Then another thing I wanted to insist on in the, is the role of literary awards. Um, if you have a book which has been awarded a prize, it's, it's great uh, to place it uh, with a producer. So have in mind the example of The Color Purple by Alice Walker, which was awarded the Pulitzer Prize. And obviously, Stefan Spielberg, when acquiring the rights, had, has also in mind uh, getting uh, awards for the film. And he was nominated for 11 Academy Awards. So basically, awarded books might uh, produce award awarded films. So that's an interesting process. Um, so I've gave in this presentation a few tips uh, when you will be representing um, a publishing house to look at your backlist for modern classics. Don't focus on the new books. Look for nonfiction and um, also uh, for books which are being given awards. Um, then can we move on to the next uh, one, please? Uh, another important thing about book adaptation is um, genre novels are getting adapted a lot. For many years, they've been uh, very underestimated and they now gain a raising and well-deserved interest from producers. So in the list of genres which are especially um, popular, Look for fantasy. See, we have the Lord of the Rings in mind, of course. Uh, thrillers, John Le Carré. I mean, I think nearly all his books have been adapted into films. Horror, don't be scared. I think Stephen King has had a lot of success with um, books adapted uh, from, from uh, horror books. YA and graphic novel. I think graphic novels is in an interesting genre because it's, uh, in a way, it's already a storyboard. I don't know if you're familiar with these technical terms, but when you make a film in a, in a later stage, you have a storyboard of the scenes. So um, you actually, when, when looking at the graphic novel, you actually see a, a sort of a storyboard. Uh, I, I, I'll we come later um, to a very specific example I think inter is interesting, is Snowpiercer, uh, adapted into a long feature film by the Korean uh, director Bong Joon-ho. Um, and uh, so, yeah, don't underestimate genre. You don't, you don't, you don't want to be snobbish. When you sell uh, film rights, you want a good story. And you, you, don't, you don't care about the genre. 
And then the next, uh, please, is, um, I mean, another trend um, in, in book adaptation is, um, no, stop, uh, is um, feminism. For years, film and film adaptations have focused on male casting and male talents. But it, it has became little by little more obvious that women are the true readers of books, but they are also the one uh, choosing the film to watch, apparently. <laughs> so with the Me Too movement, more and more female-driven projects, but also female-driven artistic package have emerged. Um, I've got here one example among numerous uh, projects, but The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood is an interesting uh, example, I think. Uh, she was a beloved Canadian uh, author, but she, I mean, her work um, wasn't known to the general public. But thanks to the success of the series, uh, which, which is raising female issues, um, is, the project is built among a, a very powerful female casting. Um, you have a good example on how an author grows thanks to book into film adaptation. And uh, she's now a living myth and the commercial success of her book have revived the backlist of, of great literary publishing houses around the world who had her books on, on, on their backlist, uh, luckily. Um, yeah, I've, I've, among the tips, I've also said that men are also great feminists because you don't need to be a woman to, to have a a very um, female-driven uh, film project. But I would encourage uh, professionals to, to join. Um, yeah, I'm myself part of the Media Club L, which is a, 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 a club of, of, of women working for that more and more um, female-driven project emerges on the French market. So, next, please. Uh, so I now come to um, another part of my presentation. Um, we'll be um, discussing, uh, I hope also with you later on, the strategies on uh, how to place a project with a producer. So first strategy is to, to, to attach a cast, to think in terms of, of, of casting when you read a book. Um, there are numerous examples of, of book adaptation which are built around a prestigious cast. One uh, I could uh, maybe uh, underline is One Few Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Ken Keyes' amazing novel, which was adapted into a feature film in the 70s and won the big five Oscars. I think it, it won Best Picture, Director, Actor, Actress and Screenplay. And I think if you've seen the film, it's absolutely dominated by Jack Nicholson playing Mike Murphy and also Louise Fletcher playing the tyrannical nurse. So it's a, truly a mythic book um, adapted um, into a mythic film thanks to mythic actors. And multi-awarded actors see book adaptation as a professional achievement. This is book adaptation is the prestige project by excellence. So um, yeah, I would recommend a professional who want to, to, to work in, in the business of, of film rise to watch a lot of films and series, um, short film hours uh, um, to identify raising directors, meet agents so that to approach and to attach the right talents with the book adaptation project. The next, um, another strategy, uh, I'm sure you've, you've discussed this in the previous uh, session of this masterclass, um, approach platform, uh, because platform love um, adaptation. They love book adaptation. So this new model uh, has recently emerged. Um, why do they like book adaptation so much? because they like to build um, their audience on an already established readership. And they also love the originality of a concept. 
because the book, um, yeah, it's, it's already conceptualized. I, I will explain you later. But for a platform, the perfect package would be on the one hand a talent, either a scriptwriter um, or a team of scriptwriters or a director, plus a book. And those two ingredients together to them means success. So we have to make the most out of this um, yeah, um, greed for a book adaptation. Generally, there is no better start for a book for a film project um, than a director and a, or a scriptwriter uh, who fall in love with a book read. Uh, most of the time, it's just the books they've read just randomly, and they come to you with a um, true uh, desire to adapt the book uh, into a film. And they've led the universe, the story infused their imaginary, and, and, and they, they just mature uh, for this uh, process of adapting the book. Because the, the film uh, business and the film production business has to do with obsession. Because there is obviously a lot of you know, ideas around the film business that it's so glamorous. But I want to say it now, it's a lot of sweat and a lot of sacrifices are involved in making a, a film happen. It takes a lot of time. I would say five years is short uh, in, the, in, the, in the film um, time um, lapse. Um, so uh, you have to be very, very convinced uh, about your project. Um, the next, please. Um, I'm coming to uh, something which is very important. When you talk about, when you approach a producer to convince him to adapt your book into a film, you will have to pitch it. You have to, to talk about it. And you must work on how to, to pitch it as a concept. You might have heard of this expression, high concept story. Uh, as a young professional, it took me a lot of time to understand uh, what it means. Um, basically, all story, um, all the stories work in the same way. You have a hero, which is sometimes an archetype, which is facing a challenging goal, fighting opponents, but it will overcome obstacles. And classically, the ending of a feature film offers a true outcome, happy or tragic ending. Whereas in the case of a series, the last episode of the season closes some destinies and leaves some other open for the next season. So the, I mean, the heart of pitching a book as a concept is something which is very important. Basically, you have to be able to tell the story in a few sentences and tell about, as I say, uh, the main character, his goal, uh, the obstacle he's facing, and the outcome of the story. In a pitch, you tell everything, inc including the end of the story. Uh, so you, um, then we'll move, I think, to uh, examples. I think, uh, yeah, the next one. And this book uh, and this film I've mentioned uh, is a fascinating example. And I've discussed uh, with the rights person at Casterman so that she tell me the true story behind it. So I'm going to tell it to you now. And so Snowpiercer uh, was a graphic novel, a French graphic novel. Um, you see the cover here on, on the presentation. And randomly, it was read by the film, the Korean film director, Bon jong hoon And what's very funny, he read the book in a pirate edition from the French. And so an, an, an illegal uh, version of it. And he became obsessed with it. And through uh, his Korean production company uh, he's working for, uh, I think it's called Chan Woo Park, he approached Casterman and, and acquire the rights. 
what's very interesting in the career of Bon Jong Hu, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry because I might not pronounce his name right, but it, I know his work very well, and it's the first and only international project he has made in co production with a US company. The story of the Snowpiercer is a fascinating story. It's uh, basically anticipation. Uh, you have to imagine a future where the due to climate change, uh, it's amazingly uh, cold and the only survivors among mankind are living on board of a train. And on the train, there is a very um, brutal um, hierarchy between um, the end of the uh, of the train where all basically the poor people the workers are gathered whereas at the um, at the at the in the very first wagon of, of of the train you have the master of this new world uh, who lives in uh, in luxury and uh, it's, it's typically very high concept very original um, with this close-up within the train so it's something you we can do we can do uh, in a film you know you have the train and then um and the story which is very scary and how um, the people from um, from the last wagon are going to manage to get to the first one um so the film it takes a lot of years uh, to, to to be done and it was a huge success and then it was turned into a series you might be aware of. And uh, the theories is focusing on all the characters um, from the graphic novels. It's not the same story, but it's a huge success. It's American series. So it's, it's not a remake film. It's actually, uh, at first, the rights person said that the product producer was telling her that he was uh, de derived rights from the film, but it's not because it's telling another part of the graphic novel. So basically the same um, graphic novel has given birth to two amazing projects. One is a you know, highly um, beautiful uh, long feature film by this Korean uh, amazing director. As the other one is a quite efficient uh, uh, action movie uh, turned into a series. I think the third season is about to, 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 to happen. So um, what I think is interesting is um, how the authors of the book uh, have experienced this film adaptation. So for Rochette, the illustrator uh, of the graphic novel, he said the book adaptation has changed his life forever. And thanks to this success, uh, he became famous. Uh, I think he won a lot of money. And also, I think it's interesting, uh, the, the authors of the graphic novel have used some characters creating, created in the feature film. So characters which were not in the original graphic novels to write a sequel of the graphic novel. So you see the two work of art are feeding each other. Um, and um, yeah, obviously discussing with the rights director at Castellman, there have been a lot of battles over the rights scope uh, of the book. But uh, from an outside viewpoint, to me, uh, this is a, a really a success story of what book adaptation can provide uh, both to a producer and to, um, to a publisher and to the authors, of course. Next example, um, I don't know if you're familiar with this series called Outlander. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting because it was adapted from a series of books. Uh, a fantasy series written by Diana Gabaldon. It was already a very successful um, uh, book series. And it was turned into um, a series which is an amazing mix of genre because it's, uh, it's basically a romantic story. It's love stories, several love stories actually, with um, a lot of sex um, in it. 
but at the same time it's uh, it's fantastic it's fantasy because uh, basically the main character is traveling throughout the time and it's historical fiction because one story takes place uh, just after the second world war and the other is is taking part i think during the 19th century and uh, if i want to pitch it so if i want to do what I've just explained to you, like try and find the high concept. I would say it's basically Braveheart meeting Downtown Abbey um, with a blend of fantastic. And what I like about this series and the reason why I wanted to use it in my presentation is to tell you that everything is possible in sort of mixing of genre as long as the pleasure of the story is there. So as a reader, as a professional readers of the book, this is what I rely on when I read my books. Um, do I have this you know, pleasure? Do I want to see it on screen? And I think we have to come back to this um, first ingredient to decide which book we want to push um, when we approach producers. Then the, the next and, and last, please, uh, is my conclusion. Uh, just to say that um, I'm still absolutely passionate about my job, which I'm permanently rediscovering and reinventing. Uh, I think this year over the pandemic, I think it was also the case. Um, to be absolutely honest, most of the film rights I sell, I sell to French producers. But I think there is an interesting tendency, and I feel that in the coming years, uh, foreign rights and film rights will have more common ground, and that um, as an international rights uh, manager, my ability to understand a novel culture can now help me find foreign producers for my project. And the reason why I think that is platforms are eager to find local content to adapt them into feature film or series. So I think for young professionals on the side of film rights, there are wonderful opportunities to, to seize. 